Hi everybody, this is Chris here on my channel and today this will be the first time I'm going to be doing an unboxing video since I, the last time I had checked it was November and um, uh, this is a package that came today in the mail which I, I think it came from not from the, the postal service it's from the FedEx and I know today is actually it's today's the May 13th of well it's May tw yeah May 20th, 13th of 2015 and of course I'm going to be doing my video that I'm going to show you to you right now this package it came from eBay and this is what I call it eBay land or what I call it a package came from what we know as the eBay land that's right the eBay land well I'm not going to be talking about eBay it's eBay land um, this is the this is the stuff that I have not been seeing before and um, just before I'm going to open it I am using my old flip video the last time I had it was last year because Flip Video retired since 2011 because of the mobile iPhones or mobile devices it took over. And I know I'm even using the old one because I had a tripod. I am still using my tripod because uh, it was the missing piece. It was I lost my missing piece that was like last year or two. So I am I actually mounted. I actually it doesn't fit the mount because now I actually use the to, to size it down. For using the other tripod because I'm using this tripod that I'm using it right now. So, without further ado, enough said. Let's open up and see what it is. This is from uh, FedEx Ground. I I know there's a lot of tape. Yep, this thing is a lot of fill of tape. I'm gonna open this up and uh, see what it does. Ah. Uh, uh, that is what I found. And as we open up and uh, let's see, I have, this is, if you have seen the last time of it, I'm going to show it to you right now. It's a surprising video, so um, we're going to give you a little bit of the stuff that I found today and okay. What was it? Is this a reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder? Is this uh, something like a, a tape recorder? Is it not a cassette recorder? No, it's not. It's, is this a record player? No, it's not a record player. But I'll give you a hit. If you can tell me uh, what it is, um, this is what we're going to be doing right now. I I don't know what is going on. It's it's something different. It's what we're going to show you to you guys right now. Um, this is uh, something a little different. So we're going to do the. I want to hit the drum roll here, ladies and gentlemen, um, ladies and gents. Uh, we have your attention, please. I'm going to show you to you guys. This is something that I really got today, and what we're going to show it to you. What was in on? What's in the package? What's inside? Something. It's, this is going to shock you people. And uh, just give me a few moments. Let's see what it is. Okay, this is the moment we'll be waiting for. Let's cue the drum roll, ladies and gentlemen. Um, Joy, what's that on the whoa? Oh, Alright, this is Okay. Let's see, let's let's cue the drum roll, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, it's not the it's the wave yeah. It's kinda of sucks that I don't know what it is. This is, uh, this is the tip. I'm not sure that they're using this. So, okay, ladies and gents. We're going to start with, uh, with this drum roll. Okay, gentlemen. Roll it. Cue the drum roll. Oh, there's some receipts, which I don't need. There's bubble wrap. And 
get a load of this. Does this ring a bell? Here it is. This is my Kodak 8mm Super 8 movie projector and the model number is M110. This is a very nice projector and, it's, and this is one of the Kodak Instamatic series. And you can tell, uh, here's the um, Here's the exact camera. This is this is the closed lid, and you can see you have, it doesn't even able to focus a little bit. So this is a movie projector from Kodak. This was from the probably late '60s or early '70s to be exact. Yep, it came with a handle. This one it came with a handle where you can carry with you. And what's inside? We're gonna open up here and see what it is. It came with a reel with just a test film and and all the features included plus it's got a nice looking feature in here it has a lot of good features in here this it says Kodak Instamatic movie projector this is a, one of the Kodak Instamatics and it has a frame focus reverse still and forward Yeah, you have to switch to still. They should have left it in, in there. There's your off motor and lamp. And here's the focus. And yep, there's here's the focusing is the focus lens is in here. And there's your thread and here's the one for threading. Thread number 2 rewind. There's the one for rewind and the other one for threading. This is thread number 1 and, and rewind. And here's the um Stuff for regular, and here's the switch for regular eight, and of course, this is just for regular eight, and and also for S, it's R8 for regular eight, and S8 is for super eight. And there you go, and there here's your spindles, and then there's your there's your spindle, and it's all ready to go. But I'm sure if there, if this is if this is the one I have using this, but. Oh, uh, who cares? This projector looks nice. And, uh, I don't have any instruction manual for it. Uh, yeah, I don't... This is kind of strange. This is, uh... It's kind of stuck here for a moment, but... Well, I gotta get the job done. So, um... I'm just gonna look in here and see what it does. So, once I get up there, I'll make a... I'll have to open this up a bit. So, I have to do is uh hold on for just a second here for well i'll come right there and see what it does so hold on just a second and um i forgot to tell you something but this is the back of the unit it has a cord store it has a a, a door it was where you can store your cord in here this is, this is where you can store your uh, this is a cord storage so you can store your um cord, the stuff in here and this is uh, very nice, but it, it has the original power cord. Looks pretty nice, but it looks pretty good. Not those little squibbly cords. And it's got the motor on the bottom, and uh, of course the, the thing when you can turn on your projector. So let's fire this up and see what it does. And by the way, um, there's actually a lid that says Instamatic Movie Projector. You got to open it up. And it says here, if you, if I mentioned earlier on the um, my video that I did the um, the unboxing, it, yeah, it was just a little thing. It's a little, it doesn't come up there or something like this. This must be the real arm latch. You have to open up the the arm latch, and this is where it raises up. There's the C. There's the there's the D for the um, the cartridge, and this one is for the reels. And this is where you stack up all your things in here, but unfortunately, it has the standard eight millimeter reels. In addition, it also came with a um, a Super 8 adapter. 
So first you gotta open, close it up. Oh, so the pieces fell off. And I just install this one. And then you get your there's your super eight adapter that that came with this thing. And there you go. And that's how you can change the adapter for the Super 8 movie projector. So now first, I'm going to start off with my demonstration. Alright, now the film is inserted here. So before I do, I'm going to do a little bit of a test film that I'm going to show you. Got this one. Uh, first up, uh, you have to open the lid, which is right over here. And you can see here, this is the lid. And uh, you have to do is how to thread this thing. So first up, you got to turn this motor on. And this is just for a little bit of a demonstration. When you turn this machine on, the reel kept spinning. And it never, ever stops. So um, what you can do is you can switch it to thread one forward. And you can put the thing, it says thread number two. And this is where you can uh, feed the film right over there. So here's what you can do to feed the film. All you gotta do is uh, take this thread here, put it right in the slot in order to get to the film. You have to feed the film entered here. But this is how you can do it, feed there, right where it is. Okay, this is how you do this is a test film that I'm going to show you. And, uh, and there you go. This is the way you can just test the film out and see for yourself. Alright, and if this thing gets jammed, if there's a problem with the film, um, I have to stop to turn off the projector, and you can do it. If there was any problem with that, all you got to do is um, open the lid. See, this, there's a lid. You can open it up. Uh, just hold on a second. And this is where the film goes in here. So here's the here's the thing. You have to feed the film. This is the problem with running this film. So here's what you can do for them in order to insert it here. That's uh, that's how the problem goes. You have to the film it goes right over here. So this is what you have to do first. You hit the still button. Well, that's not nice. Here's the, uh, this is the film that goes straight right into the little thing. Uh, yeah, I had a problem with the, running this film. So, this is how you can do is go take this slot in and put it right in the little thing. Oh yeah, this that little latch that goes right over here. That's uh Oh that's the that that must be the problem. Oh it goes over here, that's fine. And now uh and here's the here's the better part of the video here. This is this needs to have a actually go over here. Yeah, there's a little notch that goes right over here, so just bear with me for a few moments and see if I can set this thing up. Duh. Okay. This is the big problem. Okay, hold on one moment, please, if, if this is the film. It, could, it, yeah, it travels right over here, and this is what we're going to do is Test the waters here for, for a moment. And now, all right. 
right. Stop the projector here, but okay, I I had some little issue here. Just have to shut off the projector. And um let's just roll the film in here, put it in here. What you can do is just slide the projector. Yeah, just slide the film in here. So if nobody is. But yeah, you have to move a, lot, a little further. Slightly a little further. And then you go into the film gate. This is where you can do it into the film gate right here. Okay, this is live video, folks. This is how you want to do what you think. Okay. Whoa. It's automatically hit the rewind switch. That sucks. All you gotta do is hit the pulse right there. It doesn't seem to work right. And fortunately, all you gotta do is Okay, just hit, just try it again. Yeah, a lot of frustrating. Yeah, that causes a lot of frustration when you run the film. You have to. You know, first, you gotta do. Okay. Now you got now now it's running right now. Okay, this is sorry. It took about five minutes to yeah. This is frustrating, folks. You all you gotta do is you could feed the film right in the thing. It goes it travels right into the film gate and into the take up reel. This is where it goes into the take up reel. There you go. I know I had trouble with I had some better issues with the thing, so yeah. This projector is kind of frustrating. It had some of their problems running the, the projector. So uh, let's put this back where it is. I don't want to see myself go. Sorry, folks. This is the this is live video. This is what I gotta do. Oh, you gotta do is put the stuff here. Whoa. All right, this is um, right into the film gate. All right, yeah. Uh, Turn this off a little bit, so I don't want the the motor to go on. Okay, let's see what I'm. Uh, let's see what I can do. I have. Uh, yeah, it took forever to put it back in where it goes. There it is. And now, uh, this thing is still. It's on still mode right now. And you can do put this slack in, and uh, just to give you a little okay. So I wasn't paying attention. You had to do put the film in here, and uh, we're gonna watch it go. So um, all you gotta do is turn the slide projector just to see your face against the wall. All you gotta do is. 
move clockwise in a, a clockwise position. And there you go. Now you're going to watch this one. So, this is you know, all you got to do is first you got to turn off the lights and uh, give a little go on to the lamp. You switch the lamp. Um, yeah, it's very focused. Yeah, you can't even see it. It's focused though. Now, let it roll. This is a test film that, for those of you who are wondering, yep, it has some of the footage. Looks like it, originally it came with this projector. Wow, this is like camping. This is like uh, one of the women, the ladies are heading camping. So, all you do is focus on the... Looks like springtime in the uh, in the park. This is a park where they they're still celebrating. It looks like one of their mother or something. This is a this is kind of like a test film that I'm wa wondering. And there you go. That's a 30 second test film. Uh, yeah, because this video is uh, getting longer enough. Then you turn off and you stop the projector because the reels are running out. So. Yeah, you all you do is take the finger and and, and let her roll. Okay, there you go. And now we're gonna try out Super 8 right now. And before I'm in installing a Super 8 adapter, yep, it came with this thing. So, yep, you can see here this is it, this came with the Super 8 adapter. In in order to change this one. The, from the standard 8mm adapter to a Super 8, all you gotta do is take the latch off, put it right over here, and so I don't want to get loo lost. And here it is, you can install Super 8 in, in the safe spot. So, uh, watch me folks, this is how you can do. See, Super 8 adapter is slightly closed and tightly and you can see the switch it and uh, you can't see focus here but we're gonna switch from R8 regular 8 to to super 8 and of course oh and I forgot one thing there is also inside there's a complete set of instructions this is like basic operation. Do you see manual for cartridges or real preparation? And um, this is like, uh, yeah, because I don't have an owner's, ma I don't have a manual for this because um, all I can do is this for the reels and this is for place to take up real stored cover and, and into the left spindle. And this is what you can do is place real film right on the right hand spindle, move the motor lamp switch to lamp Move the controller to thread one forward. The press mechanism bar at thread two, and hold momentarily. Feed film leader end into the film slot, and then close the door. Yeah, this is kind of a, a little frustrating to how to operate the uh, this film. So this is kind of a problem with Kodak these days when they made these. So, yeah, it's, it's not too bad for an, an M110 projector. So, uh, I'm going to see if I can install a Super 8 movie in here. So, hold on just a second, and I'll, I'm going to show you a little bit of a Super 8 movie, and we're going to operate this. So, um, bear with me, folks. I'm going to try out a Super 8 movie, and I will show you all about it. Now, my Super 8 movie is off and running. I'm going 
cut this off and uh, you can see here all you got to do is so you can see if it's a problem you have to frame it and also you can do the focus you have to adjust the focus here for a moment and there you go so uh, we're going to watch Cinderella's Fairy Godmother and uh, this is the cartoon and we're watching it right now and for those of you, uh, if you're watching, Martin S5 1989 and NWB 1989 and Aubrey, what was this, uh, Breezy channel, I know Aubrey Scott was his name on YouTube, uh, and, I, uh, and a bunch of other users on YouTube who has actually seen this one. I also have the 1995 VHS of Cinderella. I'm going to show it to you right now, but don't worry, I am not going to show you the, the I'm not going to give you the video here for, for copyright reasons. I'm going to show you the video, and this is, uh, this is well, we'll show a little bit of this thing, so we're going to, we're going to, well, put this momentarily, these are, these are like a digest, digest movie, and that's, this is what they call digest versions of this film, I don't know why they have se selected scenes from Cinderella or any other Disney animated movie that were ever put out on a Super 8 movie. And uh, here's the here's the film. And this is where he meets fair, where she meets fairy godmother. And you can see the uh, it's your fairy godmother. Why are you so sad? And I'm very sure that I am not going to show it to you people. And this is for copyright issues from Disney. When I don't know what is uh, I don't know what is going to. We'll, we'll play a little bit of this uh, thing uh, when, until I don't want the YouTube to get into copyright. So I don't know if the, Disney would have decided to make this bit, thing because unfortunately this, this is actually very well done. I uh, guess and then the, the, the song kicked in with Bibbidi Bobbidi Boo. I, I actually watched it. I also have the copy on, I also have it on digital copy. But uh, two years ago they came out with the Diamond Edition. I know this is like the the Blu-ray release of that, and I don't know what is it. I don't have one because I don't, I have the digital copy, which has better restoration or something. It looks like it came duped from a platinum, the 2005 platinum edition DVD. And um, this is interesting to see if you watch some of the scenes from the movie. And yeah, most of the were, these are stuff were kind of slightly edited. I know there was one scene missing was this Lucifer was trying to chase one of the mice and then turn into a horse. That's uh, that was that was been removed from the version. I know this is live video, folks. This is like we're watching this this cartoon right now. And now for your dress. And this is one of the best moments they did in the movie. And let me show you. This is where this is the best moment you'll ever see in the movie. The Cinderella's transformation sequence. This is the best. Check it out. Wow, that was amazing. This is probably the best sequence they did in, in the movie. In all of Disney animated movies like this, this tops it all. Alright, I'm not going to get into the rest of these cartoons because of this. Copyright stuff on YouTube because I don't want to get anything a little bit, so... This is the best uh, part of the film, and it's got one of their moments. It's interesting to watch, so I'll have to let it run for a few moments until until the film ends. So I'll come back later and and see how to rewind it. 
And there you go. That was the end of the film. So all you gotta do is uh, is gonna do a rewind. So all you have to do is just move the film right into the the supply reel, and yep, it runs out of the t the film, and that ends the movie. So um, all you gotta do is take this reel, put it in in place. This is put him in the slot right there, and this is very tricky. <coughs> All you gotta do is hit rewind. Yes, move the thing to thread one to thread one forward or a thread one reverse or what's thread one forward or reverse <coughs> to give it a little fast rewind. So are you ready? Here we go. See? Watch the film rewinds. There's also a rewind switch where you can hit rewind. There you go. That was the um, the film. We put that now. Put it back in the case, and we're ready for the next show. Are you after you finish? Put this thing back in the box, and we're ready for the next show. And there is also, I don't know which projector is actually is, is lacking the sound. I just watched this one last night for the first time, and there is no dialogue in here because there's no, there, you, it has a sound format. <coughs> this is a Super 8 sound, but it, unfortunately, you can see it right here, it has brown magnetic sound strip appearing on, on the reels. And that's the bigger problem with that. The first one it looks pretty nice, but the second part, there is no sound. That's right, it's due to the lack of sound. You know, they, in the 70s, they came out with uh, Super 8 sound. That's what they took over, the 60 millimeter sound projectors, and what, what happened. The 60 millimeter sound film was pretty much a, a game for that they trying to take over the 60 millimeter sound, and what happened is that the but Super 8 sound, but, but with Super 8 sound, it looks kind of like it more lacks the whole thing because the, the picture quality looks pretty decent, but of course the sound the quality, as you can see, it's not really as done as it was because what happens when you put a Super 8 sound movie in there, there's no sound, there's no, because, because Amplifier does not introduce until probably they did not add a, and equipment. Yeah, there was no equipment, no amplifier, no nothing. Yeah, that's the one of the one of the difficult time trying to view it. So if you actually there was no uh, subtitles So what was going on in the in the film. So you can all you gotta do is use your imagination. Pretend if you use your imagination, you have to do is do something like this. So there you go, that's the, the whole thing, and because what that was the problem with running a sound, super sound movies. And, um, that's all that I gotta say about that. So, um, now we're going to the, the regular 8mm. And before I gotta go do this, let's, uh, take this off. We do the same procedure as it does before. Take the Super 8 millimeter adapter out. So they don't want it. And put regular 8 millimeter normal size back to where it belongs. So here you go.
And also, I'm, we're gonna switch it over to our eight, which is regular eight. And now we're gonna try out standard eight millimeter film. And now my standard eight millimeter is in. So what you're gonna do is turn it on. It's still on forward. And do the same thing like you did before. Feed it right into there. Just hit the thread one. You have to hold it momentarily so that uh, it will not prevent from getting jammed. If not, we'll correct the problem. So, stand by. And now, now it's running on standard 8mm is running this one. So, we're going to close this lid a little bit. So, now we're watching Boy Meets Dog. The by the way, this cartoon is in the public domain, but I have the actually had the version in the, there were many versions of this on YouTube. If you want to see it, go check it out. <clears throat> there were many versions of this cartoon that were ever put out. So um, I'm gonna show you the video. This is this is the silent print of this. So we're gonna turn off the little thing. Turn off the lamp and see what it does. And yeah, you have to frame a little bit. Yeah, this is how you can adjust the frames. And yeah, say so like I said, this is this is considered this cartoon is a public domain short, which is if there were versions on it in color, but there is a video that was actually posted online, and yeah, you can see the explanatory title says that's uh that's a big thing. But there were versions of this. Speaking of this cartoon, there was also uh, the one that was referencing the uh, mental giant thing. Because let me tell you, it's like they throw a little snippet of a cartoon. And yeah, there was a rap art singer named Tech Nine. They sampled it into some sort of a rap song. And yeah, they call it Tech Nine. It, it did a song called He's a Mental Giant. And that, that was the title of a song. It looks like they, they throw in a, a reference from from a cartoon that was shown. That's pretty kind of weird. And I don't I'm not into rap music in general because I'm not a big rap music fan and I, I can't really describe this 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 is this is not I don't have anything to say about it. Pussyfoot. I'm not really 100% sure what it is. So this is kind of stupid. They, 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 this, I don't know what is, what is with this version. I really don't care. I don't know why. This is considered to be the worst one. I don't know. We'll, we'll watch out upstairs. What does this mean? It's Inks. I don't know why I didn't follow. I don't know why Castle Films did this. It's kind of stupid they put in all these explanatory. Oh my gosh. It's using regular soap. And yeah. And he was voiced by Billy Bletcher right there. It's, this is. Oh my gosh. Is this, this is no doghouse. I don't know. That never happened in, in the original. Yeah, Billy Bletcher voiced it as uh, that the, the father who was trying to get Matt to go crazy with uh, with the little boy. Oh, that's stupid. I don't know what is with this. What's with those texts? Anyway, I don't know why it's. This is so stupid. Why these texts? I can't really describe this. This version is just a ran series of random dialogue texts. This is what happens. I, I can't really describe here. This is kind of strange. Yeah, three point landing, that is. Yeah, you got it. If you want to see it, go check out the whole video on YouTube. I'm going to talk about this right after the movie's over. So, um, we'll, we'll talk about, we'll have to explain this right after the movie.
So, there you go. And there you go. After you finish your cartoon, I did the same procedure. Rewind the whole thing, and uh, it's back to its back to its original place. All you gotta do is take the reel out. And it's the same as it was meant to be. You just take it out. Put it back in the uh, the original box. See right here. And uh, like I said, we're end ready. Put it away and and ready for the next show. Okay, there you go. That's the um, my demonstration of the Kodak Instamatic Movie Projector Mo M110. So I'll give you a little backstory of this history here about the the Kodak uh, Instamatic series. It, Kodak began in 1963 as they know as as they as officially known as the Instamatic series. It began a series of what they called um, instant cameras, which is a pocket camera, which is a uh, well that came with uh, one of those remember those old pocket cameras that actually came when you take pictures and using and then using some of the flashy bulbs that came with them. That was also the the start of the revolution. The Instamatic was an instant hit, and then by around 1964. Kodak was introduced to the Instamatic movie projectors and movie cameras, where you could shoot 8mm home movies. And then by 1965, when Kodak was introduced into the Super 8 movie format, it, it, it began releasing a series of what we call the Instamatic movie projectors, which also runs regular 8mm and standard 8mm, regular 8mm and Super 8mm. And this is one of the, the, the best one of the best projectors out there, and it's actually a very, a very looking collectible. If you have not seen any of the Kodak Instamatics series, it was become one of the best popular projectors and movie cameras and cameras ever de developed by Kodak. But this was one of Kodak's finest, and it became an instant hit. But all through the years, Kodak continued to make these Instamatics, probably right up until. 1988, when they discontinued the, the Instamatic name, and they continued to make, then they started making disposable cameras. Right up until the 90s and into the 2000s, when it brought into the digital age, when Kodak no longer makes film, they also have um, anything as, as, as time would tell. You know, Kodak Instamatic had a nice run of its history because from 1963 to 1988, Kodak had a huge hit huge run of Instamatic series of their own. But unfortunately, last year in 2014, Kodak had brought back the Instamatic name and released a series of what we called mobile cameras for mobile phones, for Android devices. Yep, they took the, uh, they branded, they rebranded the Instamatic, which they, the name Instamatic that came from of those Kodak when it introduced it since last year when when Kodak was revived and brought back Instamatic and then they call it the Instamatic mobile phone. It's like uh, using an Android device. It's an Android phone and a camera all in one. And this is very nice if you can you can post your videos or you can shoot your videos and upload it to YouTube, Facebook, and social media and other sites. There are some absolutely the best Kodak out there if you have seen the Instamatic name exist right up until now when they, they reintroduced it to the Instamatic um, phones. The front looks exactly like this. It has the, the LCD has the screen that looked like an iPhone and on the back it has the old retro looking Instamatic camera that looked almost like an Instamatic. But it's very nice. If you have seen this projector, I recommend this if you have loved this projector. That also, the best Kodak made the best projectors out there. But then in, they discontinued it in the late 70s when uh, Bell and Howell did well with these projectors. Well, this is a very interesting projector. If you have not seen it, go check it out. And it's a very, very unique projector. And uh, before I got to go into this next update video, um, 
Um, I'm just going to give a big shout out to IMAX Nation 1980 and a couple of other users on YouTube who has actually had been watched earlier that I actually saw this one. This is a this is from a few minutes, probably about 15 minutes ago when I watched this one. This is fantastic if you have, have seen the Super 8 version of it. It features scenes from the film Cinderella because like I mentioned, I have the 1995 VHS, which I have it right here. It's right over here. Just hold on a second. Get it here. Here it is. You can see it. That's right over here. Well, these are like the. This is the the entire movie. But of course, Cinderella was reissued in theaters a few times around 1970. This was at the time Cinderella was re-released in theaters from between 1975, then 1981, and 1987. And then if Cinderella, Cinderella never appeared on home video form until 1988, when it introduced into the Black Diamond Classics line. And then again in 1995, as part of the Masterpiece Collection series as well. 2005 also released it on DVD as part of the Platinum Edition DVD series. And of course 2012 also released it as part of the Diamond Edition. Well, that was pretty nice if you have not, or even also released it on, on digital format. Which, and the movie is available through, if you can download it on Disney Movies Anywhere. If you can download this one, it's a digital copy. So, there you go. My Kodak Instamatic Movie Projector. The best projector by far. And it's a very nice one. So, now, before we go, I forgot one thing to show you. Once you finish the reels, you have to open the lid. Take it down there. Slide it down and lock it in and close it down. And all you can do, take the reel, take up reel out, out of here. And here's what you can see. You can put it in the center here. And you open the latch. This is very pain to open. And here you go. It's locked in. Put it back in the case, and you're ready to carry on. That's that's what's that is what instant Kodak Instamatic projector is all about from Kodak. You can see the logo right there. Yep, it has the side looks like it has wood grain on there, but. The logo, as you can see, it has the Kodak logo. It says Made in USA, and that little C, that looks like a letter C on there, but it looks like it's the, the logo that you see here. It looks like a letter C with the arrow pointing. It says Instamatic M110 Movie Projector. And there you go. And that's all there is to say. That's it for my demonstration. And now let's move on to the next video for my updates. Well, I forgot to tell you, in addition to the purchase I got off the off of eBay, I found other goodies that I actually got courtesy of eBay land. We're going to start off with, uh, this is going to be some sort of a random update, but uh, before I get to start off with, I have not made an update video in quite a long time, in the last couple of years, or was it over the last year or two. I have not done a video in such a very long time when I did. I was a little busy writing a book and everything like this. But so we're going to go into it right now. So we're going to start with the. Um, <clears throat> this is we're start off with just more eight millimeter movies, then some other goodies, and of course the record updates because I have not done a Disney record update in quite a long time since the uh, last time I had was back in uh, probably two years ago. Which was uh, the last time I had was back around two or three years ago, which I did not had a Disneyland album in a long time since uh, probably about the last year. So uh, we're going to start this thing off with this. Uh, as I mentioned, I, um, this is another copy of Don Quixote. When I got this since February, I got this one back in February when I first got it. 
And you see, this is a Castle Films release. The front, there's, here's the side, here's the spine, the other spine, the bottom, top, and the back. And it gives you all the list of all those cartoons that are on there, but it says, Own these great fairy tale cartoons. This is a good public domain short from 1935. Was it 1934 to be exact? It was 35. Originally was from Comic Color, by, made by Ub Iwerks. The film is in very good condition. It's got the titles are complete. See that? I got that right because it's got the right titles. When I first bought it, it was it's missing the opening titles in the first two minutes of it. It was missing. But when I when I re got it when I rebought it, this is very nice. It's got the full version of it. So there you go. That was the Castle Films print of that. In addition, this is not exactly a cartoon. This is Giants of the Sea, and this is the official films release. It's front, spine, spine, the bottom, the top, and here's the back. It looks, the back looks exactly the same as the front. But yeah, it is kind of identical to the front. Here's the film itself. There you go, there's your actual reels. And that's a nice one, it's in very good condition. I watched it, it looks pretty weird. It's, yeah, not too good with fishes. It, yeah, it's all about the sea, you know, those big fishes with stingrays and all that stuff. And here's another Super 8. Super 8 millimeter version. I know if you're, at, I know Martin has 5 1989. If you are watching this one, I know you like Cinderella, and of course uh, NWB 1989. Um, if you haven't recognized, yeah, the VHS tape or something like this. This is the super another Super 8 millimeter print of Cinderella Surprise Dress. This was a short from the 70s and was originally was featured in Disney's animated movie Cinderella from 1950, which is actually 65 years ago, which came out 65 years ago, back in 50. And, uh, here's the front. Here's the, this is the spine. Yep, sp the other spine. Top. Bottom. And here's the back. And it shows, it shows Mickey Mouse on the back. It says, Walt Disney Super 8 Home Movies. It says, and there it gives you a description, it says, Cinderella surprise dress. Cinderella must make a dress for the prince's ball when she doesn't have time for her mice and friends to join and make her a surprise dress. And here's the actual film itself. Why not? I got this another one last time because it was bought from, it was sold by an international seller. It came out of the UK. And uh, this this was bought from the, uh, this was sold, I bought those because it was, actually it was sold in the, from the UK, originally it was shipped from the UK. And uh, this is interesting, I have not seen that because I already have a VHS tape of Cinderella because this one will not work on the, um, the, the Kodak Super Showtime 8 movie projector. It will not run on its standard, on Super 8, it only runs on standard 8mm, but I don't know there was not a, it was never released on the standard 8mm, but... That's, that's that. And that's the last one. Uh, that's all we got for the, the 8mm movie updates. And here's an interesting one. This is a catalog of Castle Films. These were from 1946. This was got in the mail probably about two weeks ago when I first covered it. And uh, here's the slip. Take the sleeve out. Yep, it gives you the, the whole description of Castle Films. It says movies for every occasion. It has a selection of cartoons, sports, adventure, music album, travel, historic events. These were both silent, and the other is sound. And this, this has featured all 11... It has all 24... It features tw 24 pages of all the films that were available. These were. This is from 1946, because this is a catalog with all the titles that were released, as you can tell. And first, it gives you a description... We'll have to do more on that in the future. We'll give you all about this. And, and these are the. And this section also features a collection of Terry tunes, the earlier Terry tunes. In 1938, Castle Films did, did, oh, was the first company, home movie distributor, to bought the Terry tunes from Paul Terry, the, the producer of, the, of what they call Terry tunes, which was known for creation of 
Farmer Alfalfa, Gandy Goose, Mighty Mouse, Heckle and Jekyll, Deputy Dog, and a couple of other characters in, in the Terry Toons universe. And uh, they, it was the first distributor that bought the Terry Toons to Castle Films, and they distributed it through Castle Films. And it continued right up until 1953, when uh, all of the shorts, all of the Terry Toons were sold to CBS, because Castle Films no longer distributed Terry Toons, so they bought out to CBS and started the, the first television series he did was Pharma Alfalfa, you know, the first show, the first Terry Toons television series, TV project he did was a 15-minute program called um, the um, Barker Bill Cartoon Show, which aired from 1953 to 1955, and then came Mighty Mouse Playhouse, then Heckle and Jekyll Cartoon Show, and a couple, so on. And these were all these Terry Toons that were on television when, before they went to TV, into syndication. And these are all the titles. These are some of the earlier Terry tunes. These were include Dog Old Tray, Rolling Stones, The Hunt, and Price Package. Uh, just a bunch of list goes on. I don't have too many, a few of these. These were all Kiko the Kangaroo. There's Putty the Pup. And of course, there's three new Terry tunes. And a, a cartoon that was called Boy Meets Dog. There was a video up on YouTube. Um, there was actually a full short that was on YouTube of Boy Meets Dog. And um, there's a... Yeah, the, the descriptions are a lot questionable. All of Castle film titles are all questionable. The descriptions are way question are a little bit questionable. But I don't know what is going on with that. Because Boy Meets Dog is... Uh, the was, was originally released in 1938. And it was originally a nine-minute commercial for Ipana Toothpaste. So Castle Films decided to release it instead, but they they chopped out the Ipana ad right through the end of right near towards the end of the cartoon. But uh, this is kind of strange. It says one of the greatest cartoons ever produced, but you can see it on YouTube. But it's in the public domain, but you can check it out. But they also later sampled, uh, you know, thanks to the rapper named Tech Nine, they sampled men, a, a title called Mental Giant. Yeah, they used the, the the reference to that in the they used an audio a bit from a cartoon and they made Tech Nine sample it and made it into a song called He's a Mental Giant. <laughs> yeah, you can listen to that. But I'm not too familiar involved into rap music. I'm not a fan of rap music or any hip hop or any general. So I'm not a fan of rap in general. Then next came the sports parade. Plus a bunch of these. Uh nudity. Sorry, we don't have that. Plus a series of music albums. This was predating MTV, to be exact. Let's see, I got a little bit more time here. There's the Adventure Parade. There's more Adventure Parade. There's old time movies. These are some sort of an earlier silent movies like this. And there's also Camera Magic. It's kind of like hilarious. Just it was a it was some sort of a comedy thing, but yeah, it's kind of strange You're using special effects that look like that. And then there's um, there's a whole section on the news parade of the year, and yeah, and this is some sort of a um, gives you the this is some sort of a newsreel thing. It's called the news parade of the year. It gives you the timeless collection of historic highlights from uh, from probably from world and national events that happened between 1937 to 46, and even from from the the tragedy to World War II and a couple of other ones, there was a video being uploaded on YouTube. There's videos on YouTube if you want to see it, check it out. There's epic news events. These are a bunch of these World War II related films. These are all the historic films um, through, from World War II. You could see the videos. There a lot of stock footage or anything else. There's the the one on the Tacoma Narrows Bridge disaster. This is one of the tragedy that happened. There is the, the new, and this for newer old projector owners. These are a whole bunch of stuff. Featured the uh, West Point, Salute to the Navy. There is also, uh, and look at this. There's the National Anthem film, which is in the silent form. And it's kind of like they use for when te TV stations usually signed off at night playing the National Anthem. They were rolled that because Castle Films was given permission to, to put out the Star Spangled Banner. But they showed this during, uh, 
they later used it on television during the TV station, during sign-off and sign-ons at night, when, you, when the station signed off, where the announcer says, this concludes our broadcast day. We'll come back tomorrow for more fun. Until then, good night. And then they pull the national anthem, and then it goes to the test patterns. Yeah, those were the days of sign-offs that was been on television. I miss these days when they, now they went 24 hours a day. So, there you go. I missed it. There's also some Christmas films. And there's a title, The Night Before Christmas. These are also been shown on YouTube. It's up there. These are epic, famous news pictures. Featured. It's a slide film. It also featured the Hindenburg disaster. There's epic pictures of World War II. These are in a in a two by two slide for any viewer or or film slide projector for viewers of the Kodak carousels or anything like that. And there is also the movie price list that gives you the the prices. Back then, the headline edition was or an eight millimeter version was only a dollar seven five, and of course the complete edition was about five dollars fifty cents. The price was five fifty. There's a headline edition in the 60 millimeter 100 foot edition was only 275. The complete edition is only about 875. Then the sound on film, the sound version is only about $17.50. That's kind of a a more expensive way to get a sound movie or something. And here's the back. Gives you all the. Uh, this is what they call famous fairy tale cartoons. And these are the list of all the uh, the Ub Iwerks cartoons that were originally Comic Color. All from Jack Frost to Old Mother Hubbard to Aladdin and Lamp, Mary's Little Lamb, Sinbad the Sailor, Big Bad Wolf, a.k.a. Little Boy Blue, The King's Tailor, a.k.a. Valiant Tailor, and right up to Jack and the Beanstalk, which was the first comic color from 1933. Because when uh, Castle Films acquired it since uh, after Terry Tunes was when, when Castle... All the Terry Tunes, they owned the Comic Color series they, from I, Ub Iwerks. They owned the Ub Iwerks cartoons from 1942, probably on there. But because, you know, he's the guy who created Mickey Mouse. They, they, and then, as you can tell, all these cartoons, all, the, all of these, they are all in public domain. If you want to watch it, it's you can check it out. If you have not seen these cartoons, go check it out. They're in the public domain now. Yeah, that's all they got for the Castle Films catalog. And now we go to the Disneyland al- albums, which I have not done this in some quite some time now. Well, we got a little bit on time here because I got 15, a little bit more, a few minutes to show you. I got two Disneyland record albums. First, we're going to start off with The Mouse Factory. I used to have this record when I was a kid. I missed this record when I, was li- when I lived in Puerto Rico at that time. When I, was li- I used to listen to this record all the time. And I missed it after all these years, back in the 80s, when I was when I was like a little kid back in my youth. I used to play this record, but it brings back so many memories. But you could tell this is very nice. And this is not a soundtrack from it. This is, actually, this is a record based on a TV show called The Mouse Factory. And, and if you have not seen the TV series, there was a television show called The Mouse Factory. It was aired back in 1972. Disneyland Records... Re- promoted the album from based on the TV show. It was hosted by some other celebrity from Rob Paulson, Annette Funicello, the late, great Annette Funicello. There's uh, one on <clears throat> uh, some other celebrities, if you have not seen The Mouse Factory. I know there's a video up on YouTube. I'm not sure. But <coughs> we'll get into it. Here's first the front, spine, the back, and it shows Donald Duck, there's Minnie Mouse, there's actually Goofy, Donald, Mickey, Snow White, there's all in costumes, there's Goofy on there, but it gives you a whole bunch of these stuff. It's got, it's a compilation, it's got all the same stuff, these are all the songs from there. And um, here's the record itself. Here it is, this is side one. And side two. I remember when I was a kid, I used to have this copy. But when I when I was a kid, when I had this record, it used to be the yellow rainbow design with Mickey on the right. But this I found. This is another copy. Was this is in plain yellow label. This is a very good. That's a nice pressing that I actually like. It's in great condition. 
and we're coming down to the last one. This is this is an album that I actually have not listened to it before. This is Mickey Mouse. This is my life. And if you're a fan of Mickey, this is for you. And uh, this is from 1971. Here's the front spine, and here's the back. It's got all 11 pages filled with hit all the stuff on Mickey Mouse's career. It has all 11 pages with Mickey's career. And you can see on the left side there is the, the Cinderella Castle. And this was the same year when Walt Disney World opened. And in, in, in coincide the opening of Walt Disney World. And here's a, a whole bunch of everything with Mickey Mouse in there. There's from Steamboat Willie to Mickey's Follies to Orphan's Benefit Band Concert. To Fantasia, The Sorcerer's Apprentice, Disneyland, the original Mickey Mouse Club. There it is. And if Lincello, rest in peace. And, uh, God, if you have not seen the original Mickey Mouse Club. And, of course, the Mickey Mouse Review, which was first opened in 1971. It was becomes the first uh, show they when it first opened at Walt Disney World in 1971. And sadly, it was closed in the 80s when uh, it was replaced by a, another attraction. But they're still around at Tokyo Disneyland, and it kept remain at Tokyo Disneyland until until probably a couple years ago when it was replaced by Mickey's Philhar Magic. Yeah, it was because uh, this was one of the extinct attractions, and it was also the first extinct attraction, the first Disney attraction to have its extinction. Well, there you go. That was uh, Mickey Mouse, This Is My Life. And that wraps it up for me. I hope you all enjoy that as well, as, along with my demonstration of a, so, a Kodak projector. And I hope you all enjoy it as well. And this is Chris. And I will see you again soon. Take care of yourself. And until then, this is Chris. And I will see you then. Bye for now. Oh, I forgot one more thing to mention here. Before I, before I end this video. Here's the record itself. Yep, this is a later pressing from Disneyland. This is side one, side two. This is a reprint, but I saw it online, and it was actually, when I looked up Walt's Music website, it was originally a purple label. It was must be the original pressing, but this one is a yellow rainbow design. It has Mickey Mouse on the right side. And there you can see on the other side, there's Mickey on the right. Okay. There you have it. So, time to end this video now.